What's up, friends? Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. Today, we're going to be talking about reading in YAML data. Now, why would we be doing that? Well, we've done a couple videos lately about reading in JSON data and mapping JSON data to objects in Java and in your Spring Boot applications. So someone asked, can you do the same with YAML? We don't deal with YAML the same amount that we do with JSON, but I did want to show an example of this today. Now, there's one route you could go. There's a project called Snake YAML, which is already included in your Spring Boot applications. So you could use that. There's a nice API to work with there. But I wanted to show you another route today. Did you know that you can use Jackson to go ahead and work with YAML data? Um, I don't know how, like how far I would go with this, but there is an easy way to read in some YAML data using the Jackson library, which is already included in the project that we're going to create today. So I'm going to head over to start.spring.io. I'm going to choose Maven, Java, the latest version of Spring Boot. I'll say my group is dev.danvega. We'll say that the um, artifact is YAML demo. And then we're going to choose a couple of things. So I'm going to choose um, web. We're going to be building out something with, uh, let's say, Spring Data GDBC. We're going to use an H2 database. And again, I just want to read in some data from a YAML file, store it in a database. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this project and open it up in IntelliJ. All right, so the first thing I want to look at is the palm.xml. We're going to have to add one more dependency to it. So we're going to come in here and say dependency. And what we're going to add is the Jackson data format, data format. So data format, uh, YAML. So we want the YAML package coming from com.fasterxml, Jackson data format. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and reload Maven. And that gives us everything that we need to get started with. What I want to start with is the actual data. So let's go ahead and create a new YAML file that we can use. I'm going to go into resources like I've been doing here. I'm going to create a new directory called data. And let's call this product. So I'm going to create a new file called products.yaml. And in here, we're going to um, actually, instead of just products, let's call this store. I want to create, uh, I want to put a couple things in here. So from a store standpoint, I might have a title for my store. So this is my spring store. I might have a description. Yes. I might have some products. And now I can create a list of products in here. I can say, hey, I have a product one. And product, um, let's see, why won't that? Um, so product two, and the name of that is two, and so on. Let me go ahead and just paste in a few more. So now we have five products in here. So we have some information about our store. We have some information about the products in our application. So the store is going to have a title, description, and products. The products have an ID, name, and a price. So to get started, I'm going to create a couple packages. I'm going to say I'm going to have a store package, and I'm also going to have a product package. So let's start with the store. So I'm going to create a new Java class. We'll call this store, and this will be of type record. And what does the store contain again? Let's just look. And a store contains the title, the description, and a list of products. That looks good, right? Uh, we'll need to create um, an, a record for product. The product is, again, just going to have ID, name, and price. Uh, to keep things simple here, we'll just use an integer for the price. So we'll have an integer ID, string, name, and uh, integer price. Uh, that could easily be a big decimal, but let's just keep it simple. OK, so now we have our two classes, our two records that are going to represent the data in our application. Um, next, I'm going to need a repository. So let's go into, oops, and we want this in there. So let's refactor that. Then I'm going to create a Java class. Let's say that this is a product repository, right? This is going to extend the list crud repository, which is product, the ID type is integer. 
Okay, so we're off and running. Things are looking good. I have a way to persist some information to the database. Um, I probably need a schema for product, which we can go ahead and create. So I'm gonna say in source main resources, I'm gonna create a file called schema.sql. Again, this is something that Spring will automatically pick up for you. If you're using an embedded database like H2, if you're using something like Postgres, there is a property, uh, spring init SQL mode, or spring.sql.init mode, you'd have to set to always to tell us to go ahead and pick that up. So I have a schema now. Uh, I think the last thing here is I'm going to set some information on my database. So I'm just saying, hey, here's a data source name called store and enable that H2 console. All right, so things are looking good. Now what I need is a way to load the data into the database, right? So I'm going to create a new class called data loader and uh, this will implement the command line runner. So I'll have to, oops, so I have to implement that run method. And here is where we want to go ahead and load some data into the database. So I'm gonna get a instance of my logger here. And now what I need is, uh, actually I need to mark this at component or this won't actually get picked up. So now what I need is the object mapper. Again, if you've been following along with the channel, uh, we're using Jackson. The object mapper is a class uh, that we can use uh, that's part of Jackson. So we can say private final object mapper, object mapper, and we can get that through constructor injection. So now we have that. We also need our product repository, right, to go off and save products. So I can say product repository, product repository, and yes, we also want that through constructor injection. So now the question becomes, how can I read the YAML file? So this is no different. We're using an input, we're gonna use an input stream to read that. So I'm gonna say, um, okay, I need you to try to create an input stream. So here's our input stream, and this is gonna be equal to, we're gonna use the type reference class um, to go ahead and say, hey, get my resource as a stream. And what is my resource? That is data store.yaml, right? So if we cannot read that, we need to throw an IO exception. So we'll just say log.error, um, unable to load products, right? So there's that. So now how can we read using Jackson? So if we kind of use the convention that we've done in previous videos, we would say object mapper dot read value. So we can pass in an input stream. So we have an input stream. And then we need to map it to a uh, class or a type. In this case, that would be the store dot class, right? So let's try that. Um, that is gonna basically say, this is, do we need to import that? Yes, we do. And now we can say create a variable and now I have a variable called store. And let me just uh, try to output store. So this is of course gonna fail, but I wanna see it fail. So let's go ahead and run this. And um, we have an input stream. So unable to load prog products unrecognized token title was expecting and we see right away, hey, this is looking for some JSON and what we're giving to it is not valid JSON. So there's just one thing that we need to do. I'm going to create a quick, quick configuration class. So I'm gonna say this is my web config and this is a class, this is gonna be configuration. And I'm going to say proxy bean methods equal to false. I have a video on that if you're wondering what that is. And so I'm going to create a bean uh, for the YAML. So YAML factory. And let's call this YAML factory, return new YAML factory. And now I need a bean for object mapper. The object mapper that was created when the application context was started was using JSON. So we need to create an instance of the object mapper that is going to take advantage of YAML. So we could say object mapper, we could pass in that YAML factory, and we can return a new object mapper which takes in the YAML factory. 
So once this is in place, now if we run this, we can see that everything looks like it's working. Here's our store with our title and our description. And then we have all of our products in here. So now what we could do is we can come in here and say um, product repository dot save all. And we can say, hey, store dot products, go ahead and pass that in. And if I go ahead and refresh this and take a look at the H2 console, oh, we have an issue. Let's figure out what that is. So after the identifier must not be null. So we are using Spring Data JDBC, right? So we need a few things. We need to say at ID. And we also need to say version. Ver, uh, I'm sorry, uh, integer version, right? And let's just adjust our schema. So we'll say version, which is an int, not null. Okay, that's better. And then we have, all right, so I'll quickly change this. Uh, I want the, uh, I want this to have a version. So I'll say integer ID, uh, I'm sorry, uh, version, right? And then our schema, we'll just update quickly and we'll say version int, not null. And now the only problem here is that I would have to kind of loop over this and I would have to say store.products dot for each. Um, basically for each one, I want to call the product repository dot save a new one and we'll just say new product and then I'll pass in the ID, I'll pass in the name. Wait, what's in product again? ID, name, price, p dot price, and then I'll pass in null so that will get persisted. So let's try and run that and see if that'll work. Cool, so a whole lot of that to get to that. Let's go back over to the browser. And if we go ahead and look at our product table and select star from product, there are, there are five products that we inserted. So just a quick example of, I got one more thing for you, don't go away yet. So just a quick example of being able to read a YAML file here, take the data in that YAML file and store it in a DB. So this is one approach to doing it. Uh, I'm going to kind of comment this out for a second. Another way that we could do this is I'm going to just get rid of all of this for now. So in our data loader, uh, we're not loading data right now. So what we can also do is we have this store.yaml, right? I can actually just import this. I can say spring config import, and we can say, hey, um, we can make this optional just in case we doesn't find it. And we can say, hey, I want you to load data store store.yaml. Okay, so now it's gonna pull that in. Now what I can also do is just go ahead and map this to the appropriate objects in our system, the types in our system, which is store. So what I can do is I can say, hey, store, let's set this up as a configuration properties with a prefix of store. Um, so now if I do that and I go into my application and we uh, enable configuration properties, and now what I can do in my data loader is I can say, um, I don't need an object mapper anymore. I still will need the repository. Let's say our, um, so I need an instance of my store. And let's see, right in this run method, let me just ask for, uh, let's just try that. Oh, that's not gonna work. But let's do a, um, let's just print out. So system.out print line. Let's just see if we can print all of those out. All right, we got an error. Okay, so products was null. Uh, I think we have a problem with this. Um, let's say from the class path, that is that.
right. Um, all right. So I found one issue because we have set a configuration properties prefix of store. We would just need to come into our YAML and say, hey, this is store.title, this is store.description, and store.products. So let's see if we can't rerun this application now. And we see our information in our data loader. So now we can do something similar that we did before, loop over or iterate over the products and persist them off to a database. So that's really the extent of what I wanted to show you today. I got a question, hey, can I work with YAML the same way that you were working with JSON data? The answer is yes. You can uh, create a YAML file here with some data in it. You could read it a couple different ways. You can use Jackson. Uh, if you configure Jackson to use YAML, you can use Jackson to read that data in and then persist that off to a database. Or you can write here in your application.property, say, hey, I wanna import that YAML file and then I wanna map it on to um, some objects or some types here using the add configuration properties. So with that store prefix, we can say store.title, description, and then products, and then we automatically can get that in our data loader through uh, constructor injection and just use it as is. So just thought I would share this. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding, my friends. Thank you.